scholar in residence and lecturer at Stanford University in California. His work focuses on energy and the environment. I want to welcome you to the broadcast. Thanks for joining us. Jeffrey, there was a recent report on wildfires commissioned by the governor, Gavin Newsom. It found that fires are growing more common and more severe in the state. Analysts say it's because of climate change, and this may be the new normal. I want to get your thoughts. Yeah, well, there are study after studies that are coming out that are arguing exactly what you've said, that climate change is setting California up to face this kind of um, crescendo of, of, of infernos year after year after year. I think it's important to remember, though, that climate change uh, has made uh, a situation that already was bad worse. There are a series of policies that have been implemented in California, as is the case in other parts of the country, that have encouraged people to live, to develop, to build on the edge of nature. California happens to have more of that edge of nature than most other states. And so uh, over the last several decades, more and more people have moved into the areas uh, just as those areas, uh, scientists tell us, as a result of climate change, are warming and getting drier. And the result is what you're unfortunately seeing today and what you've seen this time the last two years as well. Yeah, I guess uh, what you're saying is we're seeing urban sprawl. I mean, some of these people I, I know in San Francisco, it's, you just can't simply live in the city. The cost of homes are outrageous. And that's also the case, I think, in Southern California. So these people are actually building in areas where they weren't years ago. And now they're, they're nestled in all these trees, this uh, tinderbox. And with the Santa Ana winds, uh, there's not much that can be done, right? Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. It's an incredibly difficult problem. And by the way, this is the same sort of problem that is happening in Florida along the coast, uh, in, along the, in the Carolinas along the coast with flooding, which is to say that as, as real estate prices rise in urban areas around the United States, people are moving farther and farther from the centers of cities. And they're moving to areas which are literally on nature's edge uh, because the real estate prices are lower. And then as you have climate change make coastal areas more dangerous, make uh, areas in what's called the wildland urban interface, which is the, the forested area that's now burning in much of California, uh, denser, uh, you have those problems. It is not an easy problem to solve. But um, you, you alluded to this earlier. California, like other states, is in the process of having to make some very, very difficult decisions that are not going to be, be politically popular. But if they're not made, uh, this situation is likely to get worse before it gets better. Well, let's talk about unpopular decisions, because uh, an unusual feature of this year's fire season, no power. Uh, you have these utilities with little warning, just turning off the switch. I was in northern and southern California earlier this month, and, and folks just didn't know when they were going to lose power, people racing out to get generators. Uh, talk to me about that. First of all, the reasoning behind it, and what has been the reaction? Well, the reasoning behind it is that utilities are being blamed for fires that have happened before, that there, there are links being drawn to uh, sparking lines, power lines, uh, igniting forests that are dry and essentially have become tinderboxes. And if you're running a utility, you don't want to be blamed for any more of those fires. And so your, your, your uh, strategy then is to turn off the power that goes through those lines uh, at the slightest hint of winds that are strong enough to potentially blow down those lines. You don't want a powered power line uh, swinging through the forest, through the trees. And so what you have here is a conflict between corporate executives who are trying to protect their shareholders uh, on the one hand and residents who want their power on the other hand. I was reading that uh, a three-year period uh, starting in 2014, there were somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2,000 fires caused by sparks or ignition events by power lines in California. That works out to about 1.5 fires a day. I was just looking, the AP saying a tree branch blown into power lines started Monday's fire in Los Angeles that forced thousands to flee. So what's the answer? I mean, is it solar? Is it wind? Um, should they uh, should be underground, the wires? Uh, what is the answer? Well, look, I don't think that there's one answer. And the reality is that no answer is going to solve this problem very quickly. I mean, this state is going to be facing very, very dry conditions, fire-prone conditions likely in future years. Um, ultimately, the, the kinds of questions that are going to have to be asked are, should people be living in these areas? Um, if people are going to be living in these areas, who is going to pay the costs of keeping those people safe? Costs not just for bailing them out when a fire happens, but costs for insuring them uh, and, and keeping their rates low enough that they can afford them. And, and how are those insurance rates going to be socialized 
uh, to building the roads, to building the infrastructure that gets uh, ruined when fires happen. I mean, we, we, have, we have in this country socialized a lot of these costs. And um, what we're seeing is that in an era of, of warming temperatures, those costs are rising. And the fundamental question that this country is going to have to ask, and this, this state is among the first to have to ask them very extensively and seriously, is, is to what extent are people who are not living there going to be willing to foot the bill? But again, that's a, that's a pretty academic question to ask when you have people uh, who, as you said at the outset of this discussion, uh, move to these places in many, in many instances because those are the places that they could afford. These are not bad people. These are people who are doing what they need to do to put, to put uh, uh, roofs over their heads and their families' heads. And to tell those people that somehow they can't live where they have lived before doesn't seem a very acceptable decision. Um, but, but again, there's going to be a reckoning that's coming. Jeffrey Ball, you're giving us a lot to think about uh, tonight. Really appreciate it.